Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So far, 21 problems I have completed on computing the income from capital gain. In this video, three more problems, 22, 23, 24. These three problems I'm going to explain. So all the problems are based on the provisions of Income Tax Act. Hope after doing 21 problems, you are more confident in solving the problem of uh, this capital gain and comparatively the problems of capital gains are much easier if you compare the problems with uh, income from salary income from house property or profits and gains of business or profession here only few provisions you have to remember so before starting the 22nd problem i expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which i have given in the link under my description always keep ready the problem Take the screenshot of the points, then I'll explain. Now, see the 22nd problem. <clears throat> problem number 22. Mr. Khurshid Alam Khan sold his residential property for Rs. 64,36,000. 64,36,000 this is the consideration received by selling a residential property. Before selling the house, 75,000 is spent for repairs and renovation. Advertisement is given in the local newspapers for sale of the house, 26,500 and other transfer expenses, 11,000. So all these are the selling expenses. So in order to sell the property, he made some repairs, he has given the advertisement and other transfer expenses. So we add up all. So we want the total. See, transfer expense consists of repair 75,000, advertisement 26,500, transfer expenses 11,000. Total 1,12,500. These are the selling expenses which should be deducted. So consideration received is 64,36,000. Minus transfer expenses, we have calculated the total 112,500. Net consideration 63,23,500 from this index cost of acquisition. See the problem. Uh, the cost of acquisition was 4 lakh rupees 28 years ago. If the FMB on 1 for 2001 is 9 lakh 50,000 and the stamp duty of the house e of the value is 9 lakh. Now remember. If the house is purchased before 1 for 2001. Income Tax Act says the SSC can choose the higher of the following two. Actual cost or FMV. Whichever is higher, that can be opted by the SSC. Here actual cost is only 4 lakh rupees 28 years ago. Whereas the FMV value is 9 lakh 50,000. Stamp duty value is 9 lakh. Again, Income Tax Act says the FMV value should not exceed the stamp duty value. Here, FMV value is more, fair market value is 9,50,000, whereas stamp duty value is only 9 lakh. So, according to the provisions, whichever is lower should be taken. So, lower is here is stamp duty value. So, 9 lakh rupees is the stamp duty value into current previous year index 317 divided by 100. If any asset is purchased before 1 for 2001, the index number will be taken as 100. So you will get 28,53,000 as the indexed cost of acquisition. Now see the problem. He added one more floor in 2001-2002 with a cost of rupees 4 lakh CII. Cost inflation index is 100. There is indexed cost of improvement also. One more floor was added in the year 2001-2002. So here indexed cost of improvement. 4 lakh rupees expenditure incurred. Current previous year index 317 divided by 100. The index number was 100 given in the problem. So multiply, we'll get 12,68,000. This is the indexed cost of improvement. So from the net consideration, deduct indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement, both minus. This bracket denotes minus. So if you subtract these two, 22,2500, this is the capital gain. Now one more point is given. After selling this building, immediately he purchased a small house for 15 lakh and deposited 1 lakh rupees in capital gain scheme in the bank. When an SSC sold one residential house and purchased another residential house, 
then he will get exemption under section 54. So in working note, you have to write down exemption under section 54. The SSC has transferred residential building and purchased another residential building. So exemption can be given to the least of the following two amounts. The first amount is the cost of the new house and amount deposited in a bank in capital gain account scheme. So here 15 lakh rupees is the cost of the new house and 1 lakh rupees he has deposited in a bank in capital gain account scheme. So total 16 lakh. And the next one is capital gain amount. The capital gain amount is 22 lakh 2005. Whichever is lower, the cost of the new house or capital gain. So among these two, the lower is 16 lakh. Therefore, exemption under section 54 is 16 lakh. Did at 16 lakh? long term capital gain 6 lakh 2500 this long term capital gain is taxable at a flat rate of 20 percent now one more sentence is given calculate income from capital gain so we have calculated and tax liability if income from other heads are 5 lakh not only capital gain but also it is asking you to calculate the tax liability if the ssc is having income from cap other so other heads of rupees 5 lakh so here income under other heads 5 lakh, that is the normal income. So first we calculate the tax on normal income slab system up to first 22,50,000, income 2,50,000, nil, no tax, basic exemption limit, 5 lakh. The second 2,50,000, that means 2,50,000, 1, 2, 5 lakh. The tax income is 2,50,000, tax rate is 5%. So 2,50,000 to 5%, 12,500. So for an income of 5 lakh rupees, the tax is 12,500. So tax on normal income 12,500, tax on LTCG. The LTCG is taxed at a flat rate of 20%, 6 lakh 2,500 into 20%, 12,500. Take the total 1 lakh 33,000. To this we add health and education says 4%, 5,320. The total tax liability comes to 1 lakh 38,320. That's it. This is the end of problem number 22. In examination, you must write these working notes. Right? So, 22nd problem completed. Now, I am moving to 23rd problem. Srimati Vanaja sold her residential house for 28 lakh. So, here I have taken consideration received 28 lakh. Then, the cost of which 16 years back was 3,90,000 cost inflation index. 100. After selling the house within two months, she had started constructing the house. The amount spent on construction up to the last day of the previous year, 4 lakh. And she deposited 6 lakh rupees in the bank under capital gain account scheme 1988. Calculate income from capital gain and tax liability if income under other head is 9 lakh 21,000. Just like the previous problem. The only difference after selling one residential property the SSC started constructing another residential property. Previous problem, purchased a new property. Income Tax Act says exemption under Section 54 will be allowed if the SSC purchased a new house or started constructing a new house for residential purpose. So here, construction. New house was started construction and amount spent on the new house is 4 lakh and apart from that 4 lakh she has deposited 6 lakh rupees in a bank under capital gain account scheme that is eligible for exemption under section 54. So selling expenses are not given nil net consideration indexed cost of acquisition she has purchased the house for 3 lakh 90 thousand to 390 into 317 by 100 12 lakh 36 300. Now capital gain is 15 lakh 63 700. From this deduction under exemption under section 54. 4 lakh rupees is the amount spent on the construction of the house. And 6 lakh rupees is the amount deposited in a bank under capital gain account scheme. Both are eligible. So 10 lakh rupees exemption can be given. I am not written in this working note. But in examination you must write. Just like the previous problem here I have given exemption under section 54. Similar working note you have to write for this problem also. 
the SSC sold one residential house and started constructing another residential property and the amount spent on that property and amount deposited in a bank in capital gain account scheme both are eligible for exemption under section 54. So capital gain amount and amount spent. Capital gain amount is 15 lakh 63 700. Whereas amount spent on construction and amount deposited comes to 10 lakh. Whichever is lower, 10 lakh is lower. So 10 lakh will be allowed as reduction. Long term capital gain, 5 lakh 63,700. So we have computed the LTCG. Now we have to calculate the tax liability. Income under other heads is 9 lakh 21,000. Yes. Income under other heads is 9 lakh 21,000. This is the normal income. So we calculate what is your tax on normal income. First 2 lakh 50,000. Up to 2 lakh 50,000. Income 2 lakh 50,000. Nil. No tax. Second slab goes from 2 lakh 50,000. to 5 lakh. From 2 lakh 50,000. to 5 lakh. 2 lakh 50,000 income. 5% 5 12,500. The next slab goes from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh. But our income is not going up to 10 lakh. Our income is stopped at 9 lakh 81. So we'll take the balance. So 9 lakh 21,000 minus 5 lakh. So 4 lakh 21,000, 20% tax, 84,200. Now total tax will be 96,700. This 96,700 is the tax on the normal income. Tax on normal income. Now tax on LTCG, 20% flat rate. So 5 lakh 63,700 into 20%, 112,740. Add up both. 2 lakh 9,440. To this we add health and education says 4% on that amount. 8,378 total. 2 lakh 17,818. So we have to round it off to the nearest 10. So last two digits are 18. So we make it 20. Make it 20. So ultimate tax liability 2 lakh 17,820. That's it. This is the end of problem number 23. Now, 24th problem. <clears throat> Mr. Chunni Lal of Bidar town sold his 10 acres of agricultural land at 5 lakh rupees per acre. So, per acre 5 lakh. How many acres? 10 lakh. So, 10 into 5 lakh? 50 lakh. So, consideration received is 50 lakh. Selling expenses are not there. Put a dash. So, net consideration 50 lakh. Right? From that, we deduct the indexed cost of acquisition. See the problem, which he acquired 15 years ago at 21,800 per acre. Cost inflation index 109. So he has purchased 15 years back. At that time, the inflation index was 109. At what rate he, he has purchased? 21,800. So 21,800 per acre into 10. So 21,800 into 10, 2,18,000 is the total cost of 10 acres into 317 by 109, 6,34,000 is the indexed cost of acquisition. Now deduct 50 lakh minus 634, 43,66,000 is the capital gain. Now the SSC sold one, uh, one uh, agricultural land. And after six months, he purchased another agricultural land for 40 lakh. Calculated income from capital gain. The previous problem, the SSC sold one residential house and purchased another residential house. So exemption under section 54 was given in the earlier problems. But in this problem, the SSC sold agricultural land and purchased another agricultural land within the stipulated period. In that case, exemption under section 54B is allowed. See the difference. Agricultural land sold and a new agricultural land purchased, exemption 54B. Residential house sold, another residential house purchased, 54. That is the difference, right? The provisions are same. Exemption under section 54B will be allowed to the least of the following two. Capital gain amount or the cost of the new agricultural land. So here, exemption under section 54B, the SSC has transferred agricultural land 
and purchased another agricultural land. So exemption can be given to the least of the following two. First one, cost of the new agricultural land. In the problem it is given 40 lakh. 40 lakh is the cost of the new agricultural land. Whereas capital gain amount is 43 lakh 66 thousand. Whichever is least, 40 lakh is least. So exemption under section 54B, 40 lakh. Deduct 40 lakh, you will get 3 lakh 66 thousand. That is a long term capital gain. That is it. So, this is the end of problem number 24. So, in this video, three problems have completed 22, 23, 24. Few more problems are there that inshallah will continue in the next video. So, if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel among your friends, among your groups, so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Give your comments, subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed. And by the super thanks which is given below my video, inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.